Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're looking at an amazing tool called the Block Bench. Now this tool is lovely and you can use it to create a couple of things. We'll go through how you can get started with it and also talk about some things that we wish it had. Now if you want to make something like so, very, very Minecraft-like, then simply stick around as we'll take a very cool and quick walkthrough across the tool. First things first, if you want to get this tool, you can simply go over to the link in the description that takes you over to the Blockbench website and here you'll be able to download this tool if you want it for both Windows, Portable, Mac, Linux, you can get this or you can simply use the web version which would open up on the web page. Now regardless of whichever one you want to use, working with this tool is extremely easy. We have the web version here and then we also have the installed one. How do you work with this? If you would like to work based off Java blocks, you can do that. There's a couple of other ones that you can actually play with, experiment with. But today we will look at how you can work with generic models and use this for your game engines and also use this for rendering with other DCC apps. So by simply clicking on this, you can define a name. So let's call this test because, you know, it's test. So we can call this test as well. And we can also change the texture size to about 32 by 32 and click on confirm. Now you would notice that we have four viewports by default you don't have four viewports and to switch your viewports all you need to do is press tab on the keyboard and this way you'll be able to switch these things moving around your viewports is as easy as using the left mouse button to orbit your right mouse button to pan and your middle mouse button to zoom in and zoom out and what are the roles of these other paints right here is where you get to see things that you've created as it's your outliner this is more like your channel box or your object transform section right here is where you do your texturing and here is also where you create and place your texture tiles so getting started is as easy as clicking the plus sign and you would have a simple cube now how do you manipulate this cube how you manipulate this cube is very very easy you have all your transform tools here you move resize rotate and pivot so how to move this is as easy as moving this left and right and then you can use the resize to resize these things but if you like to resize this very quickly hold down alt on your keyboard and you can resize these back and forth back and forth this is so cool so back and forth you can resize this if you like to make it longer okay if you like to make it smaller okay that's cool and at any point in time you want to rotate this you can simply use the rotate button or pressing r on your keyboard which is quite familiar to blender users you can use this to rotate things back and forth and the rotating is also tied to the pivoting so if you hold down alt on your keyboard you can also change the pivot so i can change the pivot to the point like so and then we can rotate from that point and this is pretty cool because you wouldn't want to travel back and forth you know like this you can just simply make those changes right here so with this now what else do we want to do what we want to take a look at is how do you create multiple stuff if you like to create multiple things instead of going back here creating a cube maybe you just want to stick with the cube you have you can hit ctrl and d on your keyboard and that way you can make multiple cube and this is very nice and maybe you might be noticing that there are some very cool ambient occlusion we'll talk about that and how you can get this active another thing which is very important to keep in mind is you can also notice that because we can rotate we have various forms of rotation we have the global bone and all also local you might also want to customize your viewport by clicking on these three dots right here and click on the word customize and this way you can customize your own viewport if you also like to find things very fast directly here by pressing F on your keyboard you can find a couple of things if you want to change your keyboard binding you know with your keyboard thingy yes you can you can also jump over to settings and do all of that really really quick if the snapping is a problem for you you want to change the snapping you want to do some stuff you can do that right here if you want to make some very cool stuff with the grid you want to change the way the grid appears and stuff like that you can also play with all of these things and get pretty cool results out of them so how do you texture how you can texture with this tool is simple so since cube is the only tool set that you have here you can literally make thousands and thousands of cubes so let's say we would like to make uh, something else so let's also hit control and D on the keyboard, raise this one all the way, hold down Alt to reduce the size, reduce the size as well. So depending on what you would like to create, you can use this to do some stuff. So let's actually position this here and pretend that this is going to be a platformer game, okay? So let's just believe that this would be a platformer game. 
okay so we have this one going and of course you can create a lot of things with this tool okay you can create a whole lot of things with this so to add your textures by simply clicking on any of the objects that you want you can come here and click on import textures if you wouldn't like to import textures you would like to make them yourself click on create texture define the texture that you want so i'm just going to call this texture one and click on confirm and decide to the resolution that you want and for this one since we started with 32 by 32 i'm keeping the resolution as that and i'm going to click on confirm now this resolution is going to be applied to individual parts of the surface so if i click and drag and drop on any part that resolution is applied so we can do that here we can do that here and we can also do that right here and how do you texture with this you need to make sure that all of the sides has this texture applied or any other relevant texture that you've created so for the top view we can simply click and you notice it jumps to the top we can increase and reduce the size at which we want this thing to be so at this point if we want it to be about the point like so we can do that and now we can jump over to the painting section and choose to start painting. You can choose to use the color picker, the palette, or you can use both. If you like to paint things, you can also use the paint brush, you can use the paint bucket, you can use the eraser, and also the eyedropper. And for those who like to draw shapes, yes, you can. You can actually draw shapes right here. So you can draw shapes around here. And let's also use the paint brush. Let's make some random selection and use the paint brush to paint. And maybe we can also paint some other stuff. Maybe we can paint some stuff like this. Let's do that real quick. So with this done, next thing you may want to do is to animate. So I'm selecting this cube and I'm going to call this um, dots. And we're going to call this uh, first platform. And also we would call the other one platform two. So with this here, we can also do a couple of very, very interesting stuff. We can do some cool things like selecting this dot and animating it. But if we go over to the animation section, you'll notice that we don't have anything. We cannot animate this, okay? We can literally not animate this. So how do we do that? How we can animate this is by simply going back to edit. And within edit, we can add a group. And these groups are called joints or bones. So you need to select the bone and drop that right there. And maybe you would like to make multiple bones. Yep, you can also do the same thing. Click this is gonna be in different platform and then we can also add another bone and then you can do this if you like to actually do some bone parenting yes you can you can click on any of the group and parent these things and we can do the same thing so i can also do the same thing with this and parent this one so this way you have the joint hierarchy going on there so if you go over to your animation section right now select the rotation come over here and add animation i can define the animation i want and since this is animation let's just make it test so we're just going to make it test set this to 25 and play as a loop and once we're done with that click on confirm now i can click and make a rotation like so now this is if you would like to make joints okay so if you like to make joints this is how you can make joints but if you like to animate things separately you can so select this object get this one all the way out select this other one get this one all the way out and we can select one and two and drag them right above so let's do that okay so we have the first platform we have the second platform and then we have the dot okay so with this now we can now add movement and how we can add movement is as simple as this so you notice we have all of the joints that we want they exist right here so they exist right here within the timeline so i'm going to go with position and rotation and i'm also going to do the same thing for this position and rotation these are the initial points and because we have this as the initial point i can move this over to a point like so select this one so let's uh, start with our second joint so we can select this move this to this point so we know it's having that animation going to that point and i can pick this position copy with ctrl c go over to 1.6 and make a paste then copy this ctrl c come right here which i presume should be the middle make a paste and then we can also do the same thing so i'm just going to go ahead and copy come over here but i presume that should be the middle and paste so now once i press the playback button let's bounce this all the way back if we press the playback button with the spacebar you can see that we have that animation happening cool so with this animation happening we can still do the same thing copy this and now we can go over here where we have 
our positioning select that delete and paste and that way we have multiple animations happening but now we want to switch things up okay so we want to make some changes and how do we make that change select this one and now i would move that over to where i would like this one to be and this is just lazy animation guys like i'm just gonna put this one right here so with this one happening now we can choose to also animate these to to follow suit so what can we do we can also copy this animation copy this animation copy and then paste that animation right there but this time we need to move this object down go to the next frame position this one down go to the next frame and we just need to make sure that we have all of these things really really where they're supposed to be okay so finally we can also position this one right here okay bounce this all the way back press the playback button and so you have yourself something that you can work with so if you like to export this of course you can now export this out you can click on file go over to where you have exports and you can export this to sketchfab export this as obj or gltf of course this looks more like a trivial tool which you can use but for the main purpose of creating minecraft styled stuff this is definitely worth it okay and if you also want to upload this to you know light tracer which is an online gpu renderer yes you can now how can you get that you need to go over to the plugin section once you click on file go over to plugin and then you need to make sure that you have some of these plugins all installed if you want to get multi-layered yes you can if you'd also like to get maybe things like fabric modded yes you can so once you have them clicked you'd also notice that they are all installed right here and it's just instantaneous because all you need to do is just click and you can see that and that is how we came up with this ambient occlusion feeling that we have here so if i raise this all the way up you don't see that if it comes down you see the ambient occlusion feel so this is all about it i would like to know what you guys you know think about these two in the comment section this is the block bench and it's a free tool that you can get and it's very interesting to see that this tool is also available for the web and at the same time it is available for download for multiple multiple platforms so tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section if you want to join the discord you can go ahead and join the discord if you'd like to check out some of the cool stuff that has been made with this of course you will find these things on sketchfab so Tell me what you think about this in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you like something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace